Today on What It's Like, at an all-new location, Tommy's Toy Box, located in Struthers, Ohio, to take a closer look at this Ooh, Barracuda. 1967 Barracuda. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we dive in deep with specs and give information not often discussed on the lost and forgotten classic cars. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So, a bit of good news. This 1967 Plymouth Barracuda Formula S is for sale. It's a survivor car, 383 V8 four-speed stick, one of 1,071 made that year. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. Go check it out for yourself by clicking the link below after the show. Let's talk 1967 Plymouth model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Valiant, Belvedere, VIP, GTX, Fury, Sport Fury, Satellite, Wagons. And then there was the Barracuda. Plymouth offered the Barracuda from 1964 to 1974 in three generations. 1967 falls in the second generation, which had a production run from 1967 to 1969. 67, 68, 69. The 1967 Barracuda could be had as a two-door fastback, two-door hardtop, or two-door convertible built on Chrysler's A-body platform along such cars as Dodge Dart and Plymouth Valiant. 1967 Barracuda was designed by John E. Hurlitz and John Samers. Plymouth Barracuda competed with the Ford Mustang and Chevy Camaro, but buyers could also cross shop the Dodge Dart as well. The 1967 Plymouth Barracuda could be had as a regular Barracuda, or you could get the Formula S package. And the Formula S package was essentially a suspension package. It offered stiffer torsion bars, springs, shocks, and anti-sway bars with wide oval tires. Let's talk specs. 192.8 inches long, 71.6 inches wide, 52.9 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 108 inches. It weighs 2,715 pounds. Price $2,449, which is equivalent to you spending $21,851.09 in the year 2023. And that is for the base model. Total 1967 Plymouth production was 638,075 units, of which total Plymouth Barracuda production was 62,534 units. Moving on to engines. Lots of conflicting information with this one. So this is a side note. I didn't include the 225 Slant 6 because it was on offer in 1966 and 68, but was taken off the menu for 67 for some reason. Base engine was 273 cubic inch displacement V8. 4.5 liters. It's good for 180 horsepower at 4,200 RPM. 260 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM. When mated to a four-speed manual transmission, all of these engines are going to be mated to the same transmission. Then that way you can see the difference between all of them. 0 to 60, 9.6 seconds. It'll do the quarter mile, 17.3 seconds. It gets an average fuel economy rating of 15.6 miles to the gallon. Stepping up to the 273 V8 high performance, 4.5 liters. It's good for 235 horsepower at 5,200 RPM. 280 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. 0 to 60 could be had, 7.6 seconds. It'll do the quarter mile, 16.2 seconds. Average fuel economy rating, 14.5 miles to the gallon. Sitting at the top for the 67 Plymouth Barracuda was the 383 V8 6.3 liters. It's good for 280 horsepower, 4,200 RPM, 400 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. 0 to 60 could be had in 6.2 seconds. Does the quarter mile in 14.9 seconds. That is phenomenal for a car that only makes 280 horsepower. Average return on fuel consumption is around 11.4 miles to the gallon. Moving to transmissions. Three transmissions on offer, three-speed manual, four-speed manual, and automatic. So coming up to this, let's talk styling. Just check out the headlight situation as well as this situation here. It's very Pontiac-esque, how this comes in the center here. I absolutely love the lines here on the hood. 
Look, it's got barracuda badge there. It actually has a fish, a barracuda fish. Nice Plymouth badging up here. Also notice how these come to a point. Coming around the side here. Notice how this kind of swoops down. Take a look at this drip rail. Just look at those lines, they're so clean. This car has a lot of lines that just don't get respected. Love how this crease comes down here. Also check out how the rear end design is. Notice how it's like dished in. Tail lights are also dished. getting inside this door isn't that heavy good solid quality feel about it look at all of the different materials used painted steel at the top here down here this feels like more of a vinyl material same material as the seats are made out of armrests here as well as the door handle to pull the door shut this is the door handle to get out it operates like that this is the window crank for the big window it operates like this Notice at the top here, it has a little bit of a notch to connect into here. Here's what the window looks like. And that's what it would look like. It overlaps this piece here to seal, from, to seal it from the rain. This car has a vent window and it operates like that. I never saw I never saw a vent window with the lever up there. It's very interesting. Toggle style, joy style mirror. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. Got a nice, this is the high beam switch, clutch, brake, gas pedal, hand brake, which is engaged right there. Just take a look at this interior. This is a survivor car. All right, getting out. So that's what opens the door. I just think that that door handle is so cool. Notice the light situation. They're in the uh, pillars back here, as opposed to it being up on the ceiling. There isn't a dome light. The dome light, the lighting situation is back there in the pillars. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person would look like. Here's underneath the steering wheel situation. If I, I wear size 34 pants, so if you wear the same, will fit in here no problem. Size 36 should fit in here as well. The steering wheel isn't in my crotch. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Four way flashers headlights little knob next to it is to reset the tripometer speedometer with tripometer and odometer at the bottom and the center gauge is the vacuum pressure gauge aka performance gauge the last pod has four gauges in it amp meter at the top gas gauge water temperature oil pressure ignition just below that wipers blower fan speed selector heater controls radio ashtray aftermarket oil pressure gauge up above sun visors notice my hand for reference these are pretty big sun visors nice rear view mirror here daytime nighttime feature it's in the daytime feature setting now there's nighttime setting aftermarket tack on the dashboard another courtesy sun visor looks like there was a mirror here at one time what i look like behind the wheel Got tons Tons of headroom in this car. It doesn't feel claustrophobic. These seats are very comfortable. They support you really quite nicely. It's a really nice place to be this car. Oh man, with ease.
So here's one, it fits in the glove box, but it doesn't shut all the way. So we're gonna say that it doesn't fit. Also wanna show you, this glove box does not lock. It doesn't have a locking mechanism. You just pull it. It's, it's kind of a weird shape as well. So whenever I move the glove box lid down, notice the shape of the glove box door. It's not straight. It's got a couple different angles going on. It's got cup holder indentations on it as well. All right, getting out. So that's what opens the door. I just think that that door handle is so cool. Notice the light situation. They're in the uh, pillars back here, as opposed to it being up on the ceiling. There isn't a dome light. The lighting situation is back there in the pillars. Getting in the back seat. We're gonna get in the back seat on the passenger side. So just move the seat out of the way and just notice how far the seat pivots and moves. That gives you tons of access to get in the back there. So sitting in the back, I'm sitting all the way up, got negative knee space. It's actually pushing the seat forward. The seat could be moved up further, but it's in the position that it would be in if I was driving the car. So that's the knee space that I have. Here's what I look like back here. I cut my hair, so otherwise my afro would have been inside the ceiling. There isn't a whole lot of space back here for a six foot tall person, but if you're smaller than six foot tall, you'll fit back here no problem whatsoever. There are some creature comforts back here. The coat hooks, the lights we mentioned earlier. There's coat hooks on each side, as well as lights on each side. The windows do go down back here and they operate like that. Just check that out. So it gives it that hardtop convertible look with all the windows down. So that's what it looks like with all of the windows down. Behind, there's an extra storage space. So just check out all of that storage space you have behind the seat. It could get sun baked with this window. That is a massive rare piece of glass. Coming back to the door panel itself, notice there isn't any armrests in this model nor a center armrest in the center back here and that is as much space you have between the seats there isn't enough space for me to put my hand here this is what the back to front view looks like this is what the view looks like out the rear window from the back all right, so coming back and getting into the trunk, I just want to show you all of the different layers that are going on with this trunk design. Just notice, for one, it's not flat. For two, it's not one angle. So just check all that out. Plus it's creased in the center here, so it kind of like peeks out a little bit there. So just notice this trunk section, it's, pretty big all things considered you also have that space behind the uh, rear seat in the back which we just showed bumper jack off the side here and the floor isn't that high like it only comes up to like there's my knee for reference so just my thigh region so it's got a pretty low load floor coming to the under the hood section so the hood release is right here and that pops it and that gets you to the second catch and the second catch is located right here the hood is uh, moderately heavy I wouldn't say it's the heaviest thing I've ever picked up but just check out how the hinge situation looks so it's, it's cool that the hinges are pretty much you can't really see them Windshield washer, reservoir. Notice this has a dual master cylinder, no power brakes though. This one's got the 383 Commando. Check out the water pump. Dual horns over here.
on to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, convertible rarity and strong appreciation potential, smooth styling, handy size, roadability, overall balanced with smaller V8s, Formula S capability and milestone car status against it. Rust potential, body, and some mechanical parts are getting hard to find. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title, both correctly, first one to do so, will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all the continued support. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. The link will be in the description if you're interested. So if I catch you on YouTube or Facebook, just know I appreciate everything. And until next time, probably tomorrow, toodaloo!